Hi everyone, Kimberly here. Um, it's two months now um, since my PLIF. I had um, the posterior lumbar inner body fusion um, at L4, L5, uh, December 9th, 2014. And today is February 7th, um, my mother's birthday. Uh, I just wanted to uh, post an update. I said I was gonna do it um, and put uh, all my videos up on a daily basis. I've definitely been doing them, keeping kind of a video diary for myself, um, fully intending that I would upload all of them. At this point, since I haven't, I don't know if anybody's interested at all. Uh, if you are, uh, I certainly am more than happy to post them, but uh, maybe the only person who's interested is me. I've definitely um, utilized them to uh, track my progress and uh, as I go on, we Week by week, um, maybe little things I was feeling, sensations or some nerve issues. Um, I have looked back on my video diaries and and been able to um, say, oh yeah, I remember. I, you know, I felt that way. And um, the two months uh, has um, had some ups and downs, mostly ups. Um, I walk every day. I um, drink lots of water. I'm eating well. I've lost probably. Um, 15 pounds you know I was pretty sedentary up until the surgery um, and just a little bit of background I had two micro discectomies um, my first one was uh, March 2013 and uh, about four days later I re-herniated um, and had to go in for revision surgery um, somewhere uh, within um, a year's time after that I uh, re-herniated and didn't realize it. Um, I was being seen by a pain management doctor, had never known what pain management was before that, and went through a series of epidural shots and cortisone shots and, uh, you know, medications, all kinds of different things. And um, I just wasn't getting better. So uh, I guess it was almost not quite a year, and I just insisted on an MRI, and the MRI showed a huge herniation again at the L4 L5 so um, I'm glad that I was my own advocate on that one because um, it, it was pretty serious so I didn't know much going into my first uh, two surgeries so um, I, you know when everybody everybody my, my neurosurgeon that I had previous and my pain management doctor my primary care everybody was saying hey look you need a fusion and I just wasn't uh, jumping up and down for that because it's one of those kinds of surgeries that um, you know you don't come back from um, and I don't mean in a bad way I just mean that uh, you know it's a lifelong commitment and um, there's a, a huge recovery um, you know all the doctors that I spoke with and yes all uh, I went for probably six opinions and two out of the six said you know look you have a lot of a lot of disc left um, you know all of them said I had a lot of disc left but the two that said we could probably do a third microdiscectomy was because I did have um, a significant amount of disc um, still there um, so they felt maybe it was possible and because of my age um, you know I'll be 45 in May um, that uh, maybe I didn't want to have that kind of commitment and go through that major surgery but um, you know um, in uh, March of uh, 2014, um, my company um, declared bankruptcy, shut down, and so, um, you know, previous to that, I hadn't done some of the things that I should have done, you know, physical therapy, and I don't know, I, I really hadn't uh, fixed myself from the other um, surgeries, so... Um, initially I started interviewing and um, I was doing some consulting but what I realized is if I don't take this time now to uh, fix my back then potentially I'm sorry I'm outside so here comes a car but potentially I would not um, you know be able to do this again so um, I looked at this as an opportunity um, <clears throat> instead of uh, the job loss and uh, took the time to um, do the research and um, get second opinions, third, fourth, fifth, sixth opinions. Um, and, you know, I had a, I, my first two surgeries were with a neurosurgeon local here and uh, uh, a few people that I talked to who knew 
um, or had gone to Johns Hopkins and had their surgery, um, referred me over there. So I went immediately to the director of the neurosurgical department. I really liked him. He said, hands down, I needed a fusion. That just scared the hell out of me, honestly. So I, um, from there went to another one, um, at Hopkins, another neurosurgeon. And, you know, he said the same thing. He recommended, um, if I wasn't quite convinced of that, um, another doctor. So I did go and see that doctor and he said, no, um, you have a lot of disc. We can do a third discectomy, not a big deal. So, um, you know, consider your age and, um, you know, we'll do a few more tests to see if that's really possible. And uh, I went through with those tests and, you know, he still felt that it was okay. I was really left, um, you know, questioning everything that had led me to a spinal fusion, keeping in mind that I was not convinced that I was going to do that. Um, in the meantime, my quality of life was just, you know, downward spiral. And um, I was taking a lot of medication um, given to me by my uh, pain management doctor. <clears throat> um, you know, um, and, and just a side note to that, after I had my first two uh, discectomies, um, in two, three weeks, uh, when the pain didn't go away, I was immediately referred to pain management, not knowing anything about it. Uh, to me, that's a whole other video that I will do because um, I wish I had done things differently. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into and I was treated by him for quite a long time. I had epidurals. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Cortisone shot. Um, I even think I had a Botox shot. Um, nothing was working and so when I insisted on the MRI, um, thank goodness for that and what I would say is if you're having any kind of issues, be your own advocate and push for things because sometimes the doctors won't do that and I don't know if it's because they're limited by the insurance companies or they have this bad rap of sending patients for tests that they don't need but if something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right and go ahead and, and, and push for those things. So um, anyway, back to what I was going to say is here I am um, at my eight week, two month, um, you know, recovery point. Um, if I had done this video two days ago, I would have been jumping up and down, sort of like yeah, jumping up and down. Um, I would have said to you, I have been doing um, just phenomenally well, uh, I have um, been walking. I um, was lucky enough, my insurance company covered when I got home about one month um, of in home nursing, which I, you know, I didn't really need, but um, nice to have, and uh, twice a week in home uh, physical therapy. That physical therapy is not your typical, it wasn't like outpatient. Um, where you're really starting to exercise, but um, there were some very minor, um, mild uh, types of uh, exercises that uh, um, really helped me a lot. So I was very glad to have that. And the last thing that she did, you know, getting me walking and all of this was to how to approach hills, uh, you know, don't lean with your body. Um, proper body mechanics, don't be afraid of them. Um, I still don't do steep hills. Um, but I, you know, walk anywhere from um, two to five miles in a day. And I'd say on average, more regularly, uh, three miles. Um, because you don't want to overdo it either. Um, the only other thing I, I think I can report um, is I do have, um, and I have had since I got home, um, when I wake up in the morning, I have a very difficult time with my legs. Um, I have to get up, take my medications, move my legs around, do some exercises um, that the physical therapist showed me how to do. But it takes me, you know, a good 30 minutes to an hour just to get going in the morning. Um, I've done various things um, and found a few different things that work, drinking lots of water, um, you know, the, the moving around, that kind of thing. Um, but this is an issue. My doctor said, um, at my six week, it, my, I went and saw him six weeks after my, um, peel of surgery. And he said, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a common thing that, um, people complain about. And, um, as time goes by, he said, you know, I should see some improvement there. Um, so that's great. Uh, 
hopefully that happens. Um, in the meantime, I will uh, try to research and investigate to see if there isn't some information out there. Um, I love YouTube. Um, it's a great resource. I used it at the very end. I don't know why I didn't do it before. Um, because I was doing so much, you know, Googling research and WebMD and next thing you know, you could practically do your own surgery and just tell the doctor what to do, right? I'm sure they love that. Um, but at any rate, <clears throat> um, yeah, I gosh, I did so much research. It was ridiculous. Uh, and um, the only thing it did was prolong the inevitable, which um, after uh, four neurosurgeons and two orthopedic surgeons, um, the last orthopedic surgeon really being pivotal. I think I knew in my mind that um, this is where I was going to go, but I, I did kick and scream the whole way. Um, but the last orthopedic surgeon that I saw was recommended by my primary care. I'd gone to him and said, hey, look, here's all the information I have. I don't know what to do. I still don't really know what to do. And he said, I'm going to send you to this guy. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. And he doesn't like to operate if he doesn't have to. Um, and so if there's any way possible, he will tell you. Um, I already knew at that point that if I was going to have the surgery, I knew I was going to have it at Hopkins with this one particular doctor that I, I loved. Um, and it wasn't the director, but this guy, um, I just knew that he was the right one if I was going to have it. So I saw the orthopedic surgeon and uh, in there about 10 minutes, he had reviewed everything, all of my records and x-rays and, you know, every test in the world. And he came in and he said, look, yes, you have enough disc space. And if you want to do that, you can. But think about your quality of life. We don't know why this disc keeps slipping out of place. And it's a monstrous herniation that is crushing your nerves. So it's your decision. But... Um, you know, my recommendation is to have the spinal fusion. Um, I left his office that day and I got in the car and I cried a little bit, I'm not a big crier. Um, and I knew it was at that moment that I knew I drove home and I knew, um, I just knew I was going to have the surgery. So I had already been on the calendar for December 9th with the uh, doctor I knew um, would do the surgery if I was going to have it and uh, I went home I called him up and I said okay I keep me on the calendar I'm, I'm ready um, and as soon as I did that I felt um, you know some relief uh, in in that I was finally making the decision so uh, um, you know along with that <laughs> you know comes the days um, prior to the surgery. I guess I had made that decision on December 2nd when I called him and I had been on the calendar for uh, three weeks and my it was for December 9th. So you can imagine um, the relief after finally making the decision to do so was the anxiety, right? Um, and uh, the, the closer we got, the more anxious I got and I kept thinking, oh my gosh, I don't think I can go through with it. But I will tell you, um, in that last five days, um, whatever I had left in me um, to get up every morning and walk um, was gone. I, I couldn't do it anymore. And, um, you know, my, I had to send my son to my parents' house early because I couldn't even drive him back and forth to school anymore. Um, and, you know, my chronic pain and this suffering was causing suffering across the board. My poor kid, I, you know, I just feel terrible that he has had to go through this. Um, so after the surgery, I'm telling you, two days, uh, I had some visitors and I didn't have any pain. I didn't have the nerve pain. I didn't have um, any pain in my back from the disc um, where it had herniated. The doctor came in and said that he had never seen in all of his 17 years of, of practicing, and this is what he does, um, uh, is primarily this kind of surgery. He said he had never seen a herniation so large and just crushing those poor nerves. And he was really worried that I was going to have um, nerve pain and back pain for the rest of my life. Uh, and I'm telling you, I didn't at day two. Um, I was better day three. Again, taking the conservative route, you know, a lot of people are out of the hospital in three days. I was there nine, 10 days. 
Um, that was really out of choice. Um, so I don't want to scare anybody about that. Um, but I needed to be there and I needed to get better. I was getting some um, rehabilitation.